finding out about what was happening at his fiancée's party. Let's read the story. Original post, I can't believe I'm involved in a story like this. I haven't actually talked to anyone about what happened even though a lot of people are trying. I think I just need to vent a little bit before I talk to anyone. My girlfriend and I were together four years and we were engaged to be married. Last weekend she had her bachelorette party. I didn't have a problem with it, especially after what she told me was the plan. Her and some friends were going to rent an Airbnb or something, a big place with like four bedrooms, and they were just going to get trashed and party and hang out. The day of the party she was at my place, a two-bedroom apartment, one room I use as a home office. I am a self-employed investor. She makes all of the arrangements and goes to meet her friends. We texted a little, but as the party warmed up, we stopped and I figured they were just having fun. After midnight, I start getting ready for bed and notice that the computer in my office isn't turned off. Rather, the black screen was just a screensaver. It turns out fiancé had not logged out and her messenger was still open on the computer. There was a group chat where her and the girls had been planning everything, and a lot of videos were uploaded to the chat. I was a little curious and I started watching some of the videos. Most of them were pretty innocent, just a group of 15 girls getting drunk and stoned, and dancing and whatever. Then there was a video of a woman going to the front door and about 10 guys enter the apartment. I don't know who they were and I didn't recognize anyone. There were a couple videos of the guys and girls dancing and drinking. And then the worst happened. A video started of my fiancé making out with a guy on the sofa. She stops and rolls over and starts making out with a second guy. Then there was a video of her and the two guys going into a bedroom. There was also a video of them coming out, that according to the timestamps was 5 minutes later. But that doesn't mean anything. For all I know, the videos were an hour apart and they were all just uploaded at the same time. Seeing all this was like a sledgehammer to a guy. I walked into the bathroom because I thought I would be sick. I wasn't. But I feel like I paced back and forth in the apartment for about 30 minutes. Then I poured myself a rocks glass full of whiskey and chugged it down. I saved the videos, and then made one of my own. Just a short little selfie video of me saying, Hi, this is Bob your ex-fiancé. Just wanted to say I saw the videos from the party, and the wedding is off. I hope it was worth it. I'm glad I saved the videos, because in less than 10 minutes they were all deleted and my phone started blowing up. But I didn't answer any calls or texts. At first it was just my girlfriend texting saying she can explain and it's not what it looked like. Then her friends joined in, but I ignored everyone and didn't respond. Then suddenly I got a request for a video chat, and I'll admit my curiosity got the better of me. I answered the call but didn't say anything. It was my fiancé sitting in front of the camera and she looked like she had been crying and the other friends just around her. I really only know maybe four of the friends but I recognize a lot of the others. First she started apologizing, but kept saying it wasn't what it looked like. It was just a party and the guys coming over was not planned or anything like that. She said it might have looked bad but nothing happened. When I didn't say anything, she just kept going on with more of the same and her friends backed her up. The more I didn't speak the more hysterical she got. Eventually she admitted to kissing the two guys but dumped the blame on her friends who all took responsibility for that, which surprised me a little. She said the kisses didn't mean anything and that's all that happened. Then she seemed to remember the video of her going into the bedroom, and she started screaming that it was just a joke and nothing happened. All the other women confirmed it was just a joke, and that my fiancé had walked into the room and then turned around and walked out again. This just kept going on and on, and they just kept repeating themselves. Eventually everyone got quiet and all I said was, is there anything else to add? She said no, and I just ended the video call. I went onto social media and changed my relationship status to single and posted that the wedding was off, and if anyone had bought a present, they should feel free to return it. Fiancé saw the post and is freaking out even more and just keeps insisting that all she did was kiss, and nothing else. I sent her a text saying that if I suspect that her, or any of her friends lie about what happened or try to make me the bad guy, then I will post all the videos online. Right now, no one else knows what is happening. This was a couple days ago and everything for the wedding is cancelled, and my fiancé just keeps pursuing me. Any advice on what I should do from here? Now for the top advice before reading the update. You made the right call. Her friends are on her side, right or wrong. You will never get the full truth. No reason to put yourself through any more pain and drama. Plus, for some people, seeing your fiancé kissing two guys would be enough to call off the wedding. It would at least get a postponement from me, and probably more depending on the circumstances. I would be done. This is why these pre-wedding single parties tend not to end well. It's friends baiting cheating without the partner knowing. If you want to verify if more did or did not happen, demand the original videos of her entering and leaving the bedroom. These time stamps should tell you. If she refuses or makes excuses why they cannot provide the footage, this also gives you your answer. I hadn't thought of that, thanks for the tip. 
Isn't the kissing enough to end it? Even if she didn't get double teamed, but she did. Wouldn't making out with two dudes at a party be enough to end it? She didn't even admit to it at first, and only admitted to it because it was actually on video. You already know what wasn't on video though. And besides all this, her poor decisions broke your trust in her. Do not marry someone you do not trust. I thought it might be good for my own peace of mind, just so I'm not always wondering. Start with the most generous explanation possible. Her friends invited the guys over without her knowing. She chose to kiss them, but did nothing in the bedroom. If that is an irreparable violation of trust for you, nothing more to do. You are done, except for sorting the possessions. If it isn't a total absolute deal breaker, more work to do. Find out what actually happened. Ask her to figure out why it happened and how it would never happen again. Then decide if you can rebuild trust and whether you are up for that. And now for the update. Thanks for everyone who commented and sent private messages. I wasn't sure if writing here would help but it did. And the signs of support were really helpful. So thanks again. The update is pretty simple. Everything has been called off and cancelled. The wedding is officially not happening. I got the ring back and all of her stuff is moved out. She is staying with her parents for now. We did talk a little bit. It was mostly just her begging and apologizing and crying. She keeps insisting that all she did was kiss the guys, and that she has never done anything like this before, and she promises it will never happen again. Part of me really wanted to believe her, but the problem is that this incident puts our entire relationship in doubt. I think she may be telling the truth, but again the point is, there is no way to know. If it is true that her friends pressured her to do it, then how can I believe they never did it before? We kept going around in circles, because ultimately there is just no way I can be sure. She said she would do anything including cutting off her friends and only ever drink around me. She really blasted her friends online saying if at the party had stuck to the original plan, she would still be getting married, so maybe she already cut them off. All I can say is that, at the moment, I am single and I'm just going to live my life. Probably take some time to myself after getting out of a four-year relationship. What's crazy is that a couple of her friends are also texting me just to talk. I haven't responded yet, because, well, it's hard to trust them too. Thanks again to everyone who expressed sympathy and I hope none of you here need to deal with anything like this in the future. You are 100% in the right, don't doubt yourself and stick to your guns. The only person at fault is her, not her friends. 100%, and it's good to see someone who respects themselves enough to immediately call off the wedding and not accept her BS like we see so often here. Exactly, it's great to see some backbone. Too many people have this stupid notion of don't ruin a good thing, and are so quick to forgive cheating and worse, even though infidelity is the reason it's ruined, and not because the victim walked away. She keeps trying to feed you lies to get you to come back, and when that doesn't work, she's throwing everyone else under the bus so she doesn't have to just admit what she did was wrong. It won't happen again, I was pressured. It's because we didn't stick to the original plan. It's not what it looks like, it's not that bad, all we did was kiss. You absolutely cannot trust her to tell you the truth because she's not even being honest with you. There's no excuse. She just did a really awful thing she didn't need to do. It's not like she did it with one guy too. She did it with two. You're also right if all it takes is her friends to pressure her. How do you even know this is the first time, or even be the last time? That's not a good excuse. Also, she still could have very easily said no and left, or just not made out with both men. You should continue to ignore her friends. They don't have your best interest at heart. They're probably just gonna tell you it was a mistake. Except it's not. I say that if OP does stay, he will get the trickle truth, and it will be long and drawn out. Also, rug sweeping the situation for the most part after they get back together, since she is already blaming others to take the blame off herself. Also, her friends talking to OP on her behalf are the same friends probably covering for her cheating, and they are biased and can't be trusted. Even if she did blast them on social media, they might have been in agreement for her to do that, to help her get OP back. OP, if no one has recommended it already, get an STD test. The narc's prayer fits well here. That didn't happen. And if it did, it wasn't that bad. And if it was, that's not a big deal. And if it is, that's not my fault. Currently you are at fault here. And if it was, I didn't mean it. And if I did, you deserved it. You did the right thing. Now for the last story. Wife cheated and is now trying to justify her reasons why. Plus update. My wife and I have been together about 12 years and married for 6. We own a home and have two children together. When we got together, she was 19 and I was 24. I thought we had a good marriage. We go on trips, concerts, camping, etc. and we rarely fight. Honestly one of the only things I would have said is a problem, is our intimate life is a bit lacking. She takes Prozac, and one of the side effects is low drive, so we only do it about once a month. She's usually only on around ovulation time. I've had a vasectomy, so no worries about unwanted pregnancy. 
I have learned to live with once a month, but realistically I would rather have it at least once a week. In the past six months or so, she's been going out to the bar with friends on the weekends. Not even every weekend, more like every other weekend. I've gone with a few times and we had fun. Usually though I will stay home with the kids so that we won't need a babysitter. I've been trusting of her. About two months ago she was out and didn't come home at bar close. I texted her and asked, what's up, need a ride? And she said she was at a party at someone's house after the bar. She didn't get home until 8 a.m. and said she wasn't feeling well and passed out there. I thought that was odd, but chose to believe her. Then she's also been purchasing lingerie. She sent me like two sexy pictures in her lingerie, but there are a few outfits I've never even seen her in. So, I was starting to get suspicious, but then I thought maybe she's just trying to spice up our bedroom life. Well, yesterday she left her phone out, and I snooped on the album, and surely there was several pics I've never seen. I know she uses Snapchat a lot, while I don't have Snapchat myself. So I checked her Snapchat, and found weeks worth of pictures and messages to two different guys. She had lingerie pictures, private photos, and messages about hooking up. One of the guys she has been texting doesn't actually say anything about them doing it. It looks like she was just sending him pictures, but I only had a limited time to look. But the other guy, they were messaging about sleeping around, and planning another meetup this weekend. I closed the phone there, there may have been more than those two guys, but I didn't want her to catch me, and also, I got all the evidence I needed. I was shaking furious. I planned to wait to confront her, but I couldn't hold it in, I held it in until after the kids were in bed. I told her what I found, and she got mad at me for invading her private messages. To provide context, I leave my Facebook and Twitter signed in on the computer. She can, and does, read my messages whenever she wants, so that argument doesn't hold weight. I said she's just mad she got caught. I had to leave and go for a walk to cool down. When I returned, we had a talk. I told her that I trusted her and she betrayed that trust. I can never trust her the same again. She said that she cheated because she's unhappy and she's been with me since she was 19, and she wants to find out who she is. I told her, that is when you ask for divorce or separation, not just go behind my back. She also said that it wasn't that bad, it was just texting. I told her she was sending private photos. She said no. I showed her a screenshot, and she said, that's just topless. Then I mentioned the messages from the guy about busting on her, and how they're meeting again this weekend. She said they didn't really do it, only kind of. How do you kind of just do it? It's either you did or didn't. She said she's allowed to make mistakes. I told her this is not a mistake. Getting drunk and fooling around once is a mistake. Messaging someone for weeks on end and planning meetings is not an accident. So many thoughts in my head. I'm thinking about divorce, but it's so hard. I can't really afford a lawyer. I don't know what will happen with the house and custody of the kids. I'm also thinking of marriage counseling. I don't know if this is fixable. If she would have told me she was that unhappy, I could have tried to change or whatever she needed. But she never even told me. Then she said she doesn't want to leave me and wants an open relationship. I'm not a ladies man, I told her, so you think that would be fair. She would be hooking up every weekend and I would be lucky to score once a year outside the marriage. That was such a ridiculous idea that it's almost laughable. I even told her if she seriously wanted to explore, we could have tried to swing with another couple. I would have considered that if she told me that our relationship would be over otherwise. She also told me that she gets some excitement from sending sexy pics and getting a reaction out of people. She said that I look at nude women online and she never complained. I told her looking at a model online and messaging a local guy for hookups is totally 100% different. Another thing is her Prozac. How does it kill her drive to the point that we only do it once a month, but she's on enough to seek it outside the marriage. I am looking to set up an appointment, but for a divorce lawyer or a marriage counselor. Edit to add, I reached out to the guy she's been hooking up with and got no response. I was able to find his address from property tax records. I went over to his house and told him, you don't know me, I don't know you. Stop all communication with my wife and we won't have any issues going forward. But if you keep interfering with the well-being of my family, then things can get ugly. He agreed to stop contacting her. Then I told her I went to his house, and she said I crossed the line. I crossed the line, not the cheaters. Whatever. Now for the top advice before reading the little update. Well, narcissistic behavior. This marriage is over, my friend. Money spent on a lawyer now is going to save you financially and emotionally in the long run. I have heard every reason in the book, and they are all hogwash. The reason cheaters cheat is because they want to. Anything else they tell you is just BS. Yep, you got it. She cheated because she wanted to cheat. Her reasons for cheating are just her attempts to alleviate her conscience of guilt. It's all BS. You're doing everything wrong. Waste of time to reach out to affair partners. They owe you nothing, and certainly won't grant it. There is a 100% chance this ends in divorce. She lacks remorse for her actions and no longer sees you as anyone other than the father of her children. 
She no longer has any romantic interest in you. The open relationship is complete gaslighting. She absolutely slept with that guy and is lying about the details. This is now a toxic environment for your children. Implement the 180 and start gray rocking. Plan for divorce. She shows zero remorse for her actions and no empathy for your feelings. You can't even be her friend right now. Y'all are co-parents figuring out the divorce and how to separate. Don't waste any more time communicating with a remorseless partner and start planning a life without her. Now for the little update. To thank everyone, I read every response and I reached out to two close friends. It's unanimous that I should file for divorce. And the reasoning makes sense. She's not remorseful and gaslighting me into thinking that I need to improve to fix this. And she did try talking me into an open marriage so she can just continue cheating. 